What is up guys? Fire here from awesometoots.com and moving forward with our game, I was too busy or we were too busy with coding the player, his shooting, the missiles and whatnot. We did not code the camera follow. So in this video we're gonna do just that. So before we actually do that, go here on awesometoots.com. If you're interested in 3D game development, you will not regret it for sure. This is the best of the best. So the best 3D game development on the course, no other is better. My guarantee you have for that. And uh, if you are still not satisfied, there is a 30 day money back guarantee that you are not gonna use for sure because you're gonna love the course. And also if you want to download this complete project, all of the assets for this tutorial link is in the description below. So now we can go into our scripts folder, right click and create a new folder, which is going to be our camera scripts inside of it. I am going to go and create a new C sharp script. So right click, create C sharp script, camera follow. Attach it on the main camera. So let me just see what the main camera sees. Yeah. This is okay for the main camera, the initial position, because here we are going to code the movement and whatnot. So I'm going to say here class tag it with the class tag. And here up, I am going to create a public float follow speed, which is by default equal to 20 and a private transform, which is going to be player target. In the awake function, so in the awake, I'm simply going to say player target is equal to game object dot find the robot. So robot dot transform because we want to get his transform. Now make sure that you type robot with capital R. If you type robot like this and the name of the game object in the scene is robot like this with capital R, it will not work. You will get an error here. So you will need to match the name here with the name in the hierarchy panel. So now we are going to find with this, the robot game object in the scene dot transform, which will access the transform of that game object. So now we have it stored here. And inside of the update, first things first, we are going to check if target. So if player target, so if we have the player target, we are testing this because if we use destroy on our game object and we try to follow along or follow the game object in the scene without testing here, we will get a null reference exception. If the game object goes away from the scene by any means, we will get a null reference exception if we don't test it like this. So essentially here we are asking if we have a player target in the scene, then we're going to say vector three starting position is equal to transform that position. So the current position of the camera, Vector3 POS is equal to new vector3. And here I'm going to say player target dot position dot X comma player target dot position dot Y plus three F and comma player target dot position dot Z. So this is only to set the camera three units up on the Y axis from the player. So that is the only reason we are doing this. And now vector three end position is equal to vector three that move towards and it says moves a point current in a straight line towards a target point. So moves the point current, which is going to be our start position to the position, which is POS and it is going to move it by the follow speed multiplied by time dot delta time. So it will move the starting position, which is this one right here to this position, which is this one right here using, well, this period of time. So follow speed multiplied by time dot delta time. And simply now we are going to say end dot Z is equal to start dot Z. So we don't want to change the Z axis of the camera and transform that position transform that position that is child of is equal to end. Again, here we're simply not changing the Z axis of the camera because the Z axis of the camera is currently set at, let me see here, negative 10. We're going to leave it at negative 10. We're not going to change it. That's why we say end Z, which is this one right here is equal to the starting Z, which is this one right here or the initial 
z-axis from our camera. Again here we're simply creating the final position or move towards to this position but here we're simply adding plus three on the y-axis to move the camera by three units upwards from the player. And the vector three end is simply gonna use vector three to move towards from this position to this position in this period of time. And simply then we are putting that into the current position of the camera. So now if I go here and run our game, the camera is going to follow the game object. And notice now the effect, we can explore the level. So yeah, we are going and exploring the level. And notice the stars, particles are making the mood in our game. So if I, come on, go here. And notice this right here. If I go and shoot these, now, notice now when I shoot them with the rocket. Did you, did you see how all of these boxes just went all over the place? The reason for it is this right here. So if the target tag is equal to the box, we're going to get the rigid body component and apply explosion force, which is going to simulate explosion like, you know, explosion force, simple put. So like a car explodes or, or a truck explodes or, or I don't know, a penguin explodes. I don't care. So it's gonna mul it's gonna apply 2,000 force at that position, so transform position, which is the position of the missile, and this is the radius of that force. So if I shoot this one also, notice the one that is left. Actually, we cannot hit it, so <laughs> yeah. It's a 3D game, so we cannot hit it, but we can hit this one, so bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Did you see where it went off? Let's try to hit this one. Yeah, it just applies force and, well, that force takes care of the rest. Notice this one. They just went away. We, we demolished it, removed it from the scene. Bam, bam, and a bam. This was it for this tutorial, guys. We have the camera following us. We explained all of this here. So we explained what is this code doing. What is left for us to do is add those cannons that can also shoot the robots, but I probably will not code that because I will code how the other robots can shoot the robot or the enemies. They can shoot at us and the same concept you can apply for the cannons. So starting next video, we will import or add the enemies and code that, so on and so forth. Go here, check out the course. You will not regret it. The course is just awesome. It's great. You will learn a lot of cool things and you will be equipped with enough knowledge to create anything in Unity 3D. Not to mention when my RPG tutorials come out next. So that's the next course that I'm gonna start working probably in a month or two. And I will inform you all about that. I will run an Indiegogo campaign for it. Anyways, uh, fire here from awesometoots.com. Download the complete project and the assets. Link is in the description below. And I will see you guys in the next video.